Uh, hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I'm at the Collider studio at the Kia Telluride Supper Suite at Sundance. Um, I want to give a huge thank you to Kia for being an awesome sponsor. It's the only reason we get to be here. Sundance is expensive, so huge thank you to Kia. Um, uh, everyone, congratulations on the movie. Sincerely. Thank you. Um, uh, I definitely want to jump in right from the, from the beginning and say, uh, for people that don't realize, this was a short um, made in, I believe, 2015. Um, so talk a little bit about uh, when did you realize you wanted to take the short and you know develop it further into a feature? So we did the short in 2015 and it uh, premiered in France in Clermont Ferrand. Um, and from there it just snowballed and kept you know playing at different festivals until we played in the Academy Theater in LA. That's when Macro um, saw it and they were interested in the characters and the story. We weren't really planning on making it a feature, but you know, just how excited they got about this story and how original it was. And, you know, they committed to make a feature. So, of course, we jumped in the opportunity. Well, I mean, I, I realized I hate asking the generic question, but everyone watching this will not have seen the movie yet. So could you actually do like how have you been describing the film uh, to your friends and family? Like what it's about? It's a kinetic coming of age um, drama about two rival brothers who have to come together through a family crisis when they move to the United States from Colombia and they suffer um, a separation. Okay. Um, I think that uh, the term blast beat, that's a, that's like the, a term for the type of music. Am I, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm just making. Yeah. A, a blast beat is a, uh, you know, an extreme metal. It's a beat where the drums just go at superhuman speed. And it's a, it's an analogy for what these guys are going through in their lives, basically. Um, for all of you guys, uh, I'm assuming for all of you, you all read scripts and, you know, there's, there's choices to be made. What was it for each of you? Obviously, you guys were in the short, but for, for, for everyone, what was it about the feature that said, I need to be in this? You know, what was it about the story that really pulled at you? Mateo and I have been, um, yeah, like you said, a part of the short film. And from the short, we were really, I mean, excited to be in a position, uh, have the opportunity to uh, work together. And then um, when Esteban called us maybe five years after we finished that and said, yo, we're ready to do the, the, the feature. Where, where are you guys at? You ready to shave your head? You ready to <laughs> whatever it was? Um, yeah, it was. I pretty was much kept my hair at metal length for like five years. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for this You moment. knew the feature was coming. <laughs> I liked my long hair, but I knew the feature was coming. And so I, yeah. At some point, maybe like two years after, your hair was like down to your fucking yeah, yeah, belly button. Yeah, like yeah, butt cheeks. It was crazy. You know, one of the things that's interesting when you get to a point uh, where you feel a level of responsibility to portray characters that, you know, that speak on behalf of a community or a conversation that needs to be had. Um, you know, I know that in my position, I read uh, multiple scripts in the world of immigration, border, you know, border stories, and I, I feel like there's such a urgency to tell that story, but it's even more critical to tell it right. And um, when I read the script, I felt like it had all the ingredients to invite people in the journey as opposed to uh, make a statement. And I think that that is important as we humanize, you know, this topic and this conversation and what happened to this family, you know, um, systematically, I mean, two thirds of what happened to this family happened to mine, right? So my family sold everything they had. We came to the United States. And um, I know you, you've described it as a, as a time where technology wasn't around and you couldn't really, it was very expensive to keep in touch with your loved ones back home. And um, so you had to almost subliminally cut ties in many ways. And I think my family did that. They sold everything they had. And, and we, were, um, we were kind of uh, alone to try to start from scratch. And then many things happened. And I think that this story uh, hits all those pillars and, 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 and checks all those boxes. And it's entertaining. It's fun. These two individuals here are a, an incredible duo on that screen. I mean, their performances are unbelievable. And, and I couldn't be more proud to play their daddy. <laughs> I guess for me, I, I just, uh, I mean, I related to the, to the script. I was um, taken by the language. Um, I've never seen a Colombian American film. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to be a part of that. Um, and I wanted to see what kind of things came up for me. And a lot of things did. I was gonna say this is your first big. This is your first real role in the movie. This is my first time acting ever. Yeah. Yeah. 
music? Um, yeah, I make music, but I was really excited to be a part of a project that was introducing Colombian characters that are not like stereotypes. You know, I feel like a lot of people, when they think of Colombia, they think of certain, um, you know, certain, certain boxes to put us in. And so as a girl, especially, I felt like it was really nice to play a young girl who was just, you know, what, what it was, yeah, you know, creative and emotional and kind of showing a different side of Colombia as well. We have a lot of like punk rock, metal people, so it was nice to show that side. This is my first time acting also. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what a voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me. No, I'm, I was just really excited to be a part of it because uh, the topic is incredibly relevant. It's timely, it's necessary. Uh, and, you know, the issues are, you know, and the themes are ones that people will get, you know, once they watch the movie. But the thing that attracted me the most was that at its heart, it's a family drama. Uh, very specifically about a Colombian uh, family. And though I'm not Colombian, uh, as an immigrant myself, I can relate to a lot of these things that the family went through. So, you know, Wilmer and I have been around a little bit. We have the luxury of choice. And, you know, uh, these kinds of projects are not about money. They're not about anything other than the love of the story, the love of the game, and the love of the people. And so this has been a really wonderful experience. Um, I have to say, I think a lot of people watching might not realize you two are actually brothers. Yeah, we're actually brothers. Yeah, and so, I mean, but I'm totally serious. People, uh, and so I think that, listen, you two are fantastic in the movie. Thank you. And uh, obviously your real life chemistry like shines through. Uh, talk a little bit about what it's like acting with a brother and sort of like, I mean, are you using a any... A nightmare. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, we were, uh, I, I felt like um, the, the fighting... And th there's a lot of budding heads in the film, uh, especially with our characters. I think one of the main things, real quick, he's my older brother. So I'm actually the younger one. And in the film, I portray the older brother, and he's the younger brother. We're so sitting that, down, but right. once we're standing up, with You see that. <laughs> yeah. So that dynamic, you know, already set the tone for a certain... And and just the, uh, many scenes, like, Stan really put us in positions where um, he, he really wanted, wanted to have us get there. So what did we do? We not fist fought, but we agitated each other. We were grappling on set. To, you know, get the, I mean, actually feel angry. I was super, angry. there was a lot of unnecessary fights that bled into our real lives. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like, I mean, I would imagine each of you know how to get each other under each other's, you know, exactly skin I'm like what what word am I looking for so was there a moment where you like threw something out there that was maybe a little too real to get under someone's skin or it would, did it never go that far I think the physical aspect was really it you know what I'm saying that actually getting at each other like he was explaining the wrestling before a scene he had to be agitated so we would literally be and Diane had to you know in one scene had to separate us and we're going pretty much 90 100 percent but when Diane gets there, it's kind of like, okay, hold on. It just becomes real. I, I, think, I think I tossed her in one in one of the uh, <laughs> one of takes. Still waiting for that check, you. <laughs> <laughs> I think something that was interesting heels. too is Ouch. that uh, my brother and I we speak to each other in English. Although both of our parents are Colombian, we speak to our parents in Spanish. It's weird to talk to him. It in was Spanish. yeah, it was interesting to um, to speak to each other mainly in Spanish in the film. You know, it's like in the film speaking English to each other is the weird part and in real life speaking Spanish to each other is strange so that unless also was like a whole sort of other dimension <laughs> what happened? unless we're telling some sort of secret then. unless we're telling some sort of secrets <laughs> uh, I I have a, a million questions but something I, I want to ask something that everyone can obviously answer so when you think back on the making of the film this is for each of you is there like a day or two that you will always remember or a scene that you filmed that really stands out whether because someone really effed up or you know what I mean like just a cool memory from set it's a pleasant surprise for you <laughs> you have to see the film <laughs> uh, for me I think it was we were shooting in Bogota and it's one of the climactic scenes of the movie when they finally realize where the whole crisis is coming from um comes out of left field for the characters and it's a really emotional scene for them where they're trying to figure out what they're going to do next. And it's the moment where we realize each of their points of views into this whole situation. And there's no right or wrong answer here. It's just a really complex problem that they're facing. And when, when they were performing the scene, we just, it just became alive through frustration and through, you know, just trying to get the energy right and also the language because there were there were a lot of lines and 
we needed you know that was a, a pinnacle moment in the movie so i i was just i always remember that scene when we were doing it and it, I, I still get goosebumps by it every time i see it i must have seen it like 200 times then <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think for me, me and Wilmer had a really special scene. Uh, we have a scene where, a scene where um, essentially I'm disrespecting my dad. He's coming at me for something that I uh, essentially didn't have much to do with. Um, and I like burst into my room and I tell him to get out of my room. And we just have this encounter where it just becomes really real. I remember we only did two takes of it, but um, I don't want to give it away, but essentially it gets really physical. And in that moment, it just felt so real to me and just the energy of me and Wilmer you know, the contact that we were having in that moment. And I remember seeing, uh, when I was doing ADR, I was just looking back at that. And every time I watch that scene, I feel a certain way just because there was so much uh, realness in that moment. You know, it was intense. Yeah, the air got sucked out of the room when, when, when that moment just happened. And we were like, well, we got it. <laughs> yeah. I guess for me, is that I, I feel the same way. I mean, that, that scene was... Um, you know, we we took ourselves to a very, very, very real place, and and um, the story itself is. I mean, there's so many frustrations that are happening. You know, from walking into a house, you, you know, you weren't expecting to go home. Um, seeing a car that, you know, kind of described, you know, what what died, what did you really do when you were out here waiting for us? You know, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff. You know, and I think. I think that all that played in that scene, and I mean, I'm grateful. I mean, that's why I have so much love and respect for them, and, and our, our maestro here as a director, because we really let those things air. You know, we, we gave them time, and um, I was, it was a privilege. I mean, it was so, I'm, I believe in these two guys so much. I mean, these guys are, are just <laughs> a different level, man. And, and when you work with people that really take it that serious and they show up to work and they're prepared, I mean, beautiful things happen, and that's, you know, that's literally the recipe for for art. You know, you show up prepared, it's gonna it's gonna work. I would actually say something along those lines too. When I was uh, shooting on my first day, um, you know, when you do an independent film, you never quite know what you're gonna get. You know, um, it's uh, it's very it can be guerrilla filmmaking, and you don't know whether the actors are uh, up to snuff. Um, but one of the first days I was working, I was working with Mateo, and he had this massively mo long monologue that had all of this like scientific jargon in it. And I was looking at the page going like, damn, man, that's a lot of words. And, uh, and it was 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was 3 a.m. when we were shooting this. And you know, I, I was wondering, like, does this kid, can, can he do it? Is he an actor? You know? And he went through this scene like several times. Like there were a couple of times where he he didn't feel like he got it right, but he went back and did it again. And by the time we were through, it was so solid, and I was so impressed by his ability to kind of uh, think on his feet when he's tired, mm -hmm. uh, and also just his commitment to the work. You know, young actors, a lot of them aren't committed to the work the way that these two are, and it was really great and refreshing to see. Uh, not only that they're very talented at what they do, but also good people. Right. Oh my gosh, yes. I wanted to say something on that as well. Like, I I really enjoyed working with this cast and crew. Like, I, again, I didn't know what to expect, but I mean, I was just along for the ride. But I, every time we shot, these guys just brought it every single time. And they would shoot them first. Um, and then once it got to me, I feel like we were just so well rehearsed, so like, you know, in sync that I would just like do one or two takes and <laughs> it was fine. It. And then we moved on. Uh, no, but it was, it was just really great. And then even, and then off screen, I just felt like we were still a family. Like we were just, we just like, we were mad tight, like the entire shoot. It was really great. Yeah. Yeah, I second that. I would just say it was an amazing cast to work with. The vibes were always good energy. Nobody was stressed out. I think I'm used to like working in high stress situations all the time, and I was expecting this to be like that, but mm -hmm. times ten, you know. And so I was I was a little bit surprised at like how relaxed everyone was and how like everyone just made you feel comfortable and made you feel like, you know, you could you could have a chance to to do better in the next take or whatever. Yeah. On that note, uh, I really I say congrats on the movie. Um, I really hope everyone sees it. Is it an acquisition title? Is it for sale? Uh, domestic rights are for sale. Got it. I hope it sells uh, immediately. 
and everyone can see it. Um, thank you all so much for coming in the studio. A huge thank you to Kia for being an awesome sponsor, and I hope you guys have a fantastic Sundance. Thank you for your time.